Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the AEW uh, Dynamite review for the 3rd of um, February 19, or 2022. Um, again, we kind of have the John Moxley versus Willie Uter, which was originally supposed to be Brian Kendrick here. Um, you know, there we go. Uh, Anyway, so Moxley takes Yuta down right away. The younger Yuta tries to fight up to Moxley, but it doesn't really work out. Moxley beats him down on the floor and then nails him with a, com oh, a bunch of chops in coming inside the ring. Moxley then uh, rakes his back and goes for a super flex. Yuta pushes him off and nails him with a drop kick. On the apron, Moxley returns a front face DDT because we've got to have ap apron spots every match. Anyway, uh, Moxley exchanges looks with Orange Cassidy and Dan Housen. Uh, Dan Housen is out there with Cassidy, and Yuta uses the distraction, landing a crossbody on the floor, following up with a German suplex bridge for near fall. Top rope splash gets another near fall. Moxley then counters with a Cazador into a sleeper, but lands on the ground and pound, and then hits Paradigm Chef for the win. Post-match, Brian Danielson appears, uh, appeared in the ring. He asked the crowd if they wanted to see them fight. The crowd said they did. Danielson then said it's been a long time and he wanted to see them fight too because he was different. He was watching Moxley uh, when he was AEW champion, and that's when he was at his best. Danielson realized that Moxley's lo lost the title. He and Moxley shouldn't be fighting. They should be together. There's no reason why some millennial cowboy should be the AEW champion, he says. There's no reason why someone dressed... As a dinosaur should be a tag team champion. There's no reason somebody whose main contribution to society has been a vlog should be TNT champion. Together, you and me could run this place. Awesome promo. And actually, for those that aren't into all the goofiness that AEW often promotes, I think this could be a great way to do kind of a actual wrestling versus cartoon wrestling storyline and imagine if they kind of went in that direction. Anyway... He proposed taking the young guns like Yuta and Daniel Garcia and Lee Moriarty under their wing. Uh, even if the fans don't like me, they'll, they'll see what I'm talking about. Then we go to a video package airing of CM Punk vs. MJF upcoming. Randy Rose is in the ring and she insults Chicago. She's interrupted by Dan Lambert and the men of the year who say Brandy needs a reality check. Lambert then called Brandy fake and... Um, and then in, in, in more than one way, she comes back by saying the only reason uh, AEW hired Ethan Page is because they wanted to get close to Josh Alexander before insulting the American top team. Lambert insults Brandy and says she basically was an easy chick, and then that's the way that goes. Lambert then brings out Paige Van Zandt and attacks Brandy. A uh, woman's locker room erupts. I don't know that Paige Van Zandt versus Brandy Rhodes is what I want to see, but hey... If that's where they're going, that's where they're going. Anyway, Matt Hardy and uh, the Hardy family office to backstage. Hardy says he's disappointed in private party last week before challenging Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship against Isaiah Cassidy, and that wasn't he wasn't the one who lost. Andrade walked up and asked about why they haven't brought Darby Allen to the fold, but Andrade didn't have a good answer. Hardy hyped Cassidy to close this thing out. Kings of the Black Throne. Malachi uh, Black and Brody King defeat Death Triangle, Pac, and Penta with Abraham Alhantes. I don't know why this is on national television in the sense that, honestly, Pac and Penta are just, well, I mean, they're lucha high spotters, and if you like that sort of thing, that's the sort of thing people like, but at the same time, I don't necessarily think that it's going to do anything for business. Pac's blindfolded when he comes out. He uses Abraham Alhantes to assist him down the ramp. Uh, he starts off with black, but then uses six cents to avoid striking. Pac then follows up with a uh, trip and running dropkick before taking off the blindfold, revealing he's no longer blind back in the ring. Pac holds black down, and then Penta lands a dropkick to the backside. Death Triangle continue to be in control. Um, they continue to get beat down. Pac King enters the ring, and then... Takes down Pac with an overhead uh, series of blows, allowing King to take control. Once again, uh, Pac reaches Penta for the hot tag. 
Sling blade on both opponents, tries to take them both out of backstabber, followed for a near fall. Pock then gets a blind tag and trade strikes with Black, who gains the upper hand. Running drop kick, Pock comes back with a German suplex and a brain buster for a near fall. Penta then it takes out King with a plancha and steps up flip dive. He and Pock both land thrust kick on Black. They both want to go for the fear factor. Stomp combo, but King manages to come back. Adam Cole uh, manages to hit a back, there's a backstage promo. He's still undefeated because the Orange Cassidy match doesn't count. He, and so he, he wants respect he deserves. On Rampage, he'll face Evil Uno, and all the know who will know who he is. Can you honestly say Evil Uno belongs in the same ring with a guy like Adam Cole? What a drop. Anyway, so Nyla Rose with Vicky Guerrero defeats Ruby Soho. Soho attacks before the bell, then gets flattened with a lariat, comes back with a trip and a soccer kick. Rose then comes up in corner escape and turns into a Samoan drop for a two count, uh, then continues to dominate for a long time, including through the commercial break. They are jockeying for position. Back in the ring, Soho hits the no future, but Vicky pulls Rose's leg under the ropes to break up the cover. Soho then goes after Vicky, allowing Rose to hit a backbreaker. Soho then goes for the top rope, Rana, but Rose catches uh, Soho completely missing the kick, and Rose lands a senton bomb, followed by the beast bomb for the win. Uh, Ruby Soho was so hot coming in, and now this. I don't know that this is good business. Anyway, Gun Club. Corners, Jungle Boy backstage, Jungle Boy tries to fight them off and then pushes them off outside into the snow. Luchasaurus and Christian Cage run out and chase them away. Throwing him in the snow is, I guess, the way to intensify a tag team title program. Anyway, Hangman Page promo page is introduced by Shivani asked about his upcoming Texas Deathmatch with Lance Archer. Uh, page says he needs to something, anything he needs. Yeah, tonight, and he uh, challenges Archer to come out. Dan Lambert makes a second appearance on the show, flanked with Jake Roberts. Roberts tells Paige to shut up and says he sends fear. Archer comes out and says, let's do this. Paige immediately hits Tope, sends Archer into the stairs. Lambert tries to hit Paige with a chair, but Paige is um, able to have scouted this. Archer said he's going to be the new world champion and doesn't give a damn what anybody thinks. Uh, this is after he hits uh, Paige with a chair, choke slams him onto the steps. Blackout through a timekeeper's table was followed. I actually wish they had built this a little better. Anyway, Chris Jericho addresses Santana and Ortiz last week. He says they've been ignoring him during the match last week, and he's embarrassed and disrespected. He doesn't get their relationship with Eddie Kingston, and he wants to hear an explanation. From their mouth, Jericho demands the Inner Circle team meeting next week. Uh, Rampage for 2-4, Adam Cole, Evil Uno, FT, FTW Championship, Starks and Lethal, Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez, TNT Championship, uh, Sammy Guevara and Isaiah Cassidy. Other than the um, Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Martinez that has been built up well, I honestly don't understand why this is on national television. Anyway, 2-9 version of the AEW Dynamite show. Inner Circle Team Meeting and World Championship Hangman Page, Lance Archer, and Texas Deathmatch. Uh, MJF and CM Punk basically have a long match here. MJF uses a bunch of underhanded tactics to get things going in his way. Match is probably one of the best main events in Dynamite history and probably one of the best wrestling matches on free television, at least top 10 in the last 20 years. Uh, Wardlow is obviously going to continue to be a major part in this in the storyline. 40 minutes left in the show when the bell rings. MJF uses a bunch of cheating to get the first shots in, but Punk comes back and uh, with strikes and kicks. Punk targets MJF and tangles him in the ropes with a bunch more strikes. They fight on the floor. MJF fires up and gets fired up with the audience. Punk then ex exchanges uh, Hot Pursuit and uh, crotches MJF over the railing. Punk drags MJF back into the ring count and continues to beat him down. Eventually goes for the top rope elbow drop, and then MJF rolls out of the way. Punk then uh, pursues it and goes in for a spear. MJF avoids it, and Punk sends him into the ring post. MJF drops a knee on Punk's wrist, 
And then we go to commercial. Uh, Punk starts a comeback with strikes and swinging neckbreaker. He then follows up with uh, signature knee running bulldog. Punk then calls for the GTS. Uh, MJF rolls out, goes to the apron. Punk slams him. Punk then does a fan strike MJF and climbs the ropes. MJF trips him up. And then gets top rope takeover for near fall. MJF stumps pumps, uh, Punk's offense by uh, pulling the official in the way. He uses tape to choke Punk, but then hides a sleeper. MJF locks on the body scissors. Punk fades, leading to the stoppage at about a 15 minute mark. MJF celebrates tape falls off from under his arm. And then Punk uh, rolls MJ up, up for great near fall, fires up with a flurry of a bunch of offense, including a bunch of punches in the corner. MJF sends Punk back to the floor. They go back to another commercial springboard dropkick, sending MJF to the floor. Punk lands tope dive, tweaks his knee on the dive, allowing MJF to regain control. Punk gets MJF in the fireman's carry, but the knee gives out. Uh, MJF rolls him up for near fall, trading cradles, and they fight back and forth. Um, MJF hits the salt of the earth attempt, but MJF uh, gets nailed with a pump handle slam for two count. MJF gets the official out of position. It's a low blow following uh, a pinning, pinning predicament, and then ultimately... Um, then we get the MJF countering back to the target. Punk then hits a leg. Punk comes back with a cradle and a dropkick. Punk then hits a corner knee, but MJF uh, bites Punk's hand and forehead. Uh, both men are on top rope. Punk returns and bites uh, MJF. Pepsi plunge from the top rope. Lands hard and can't follow up. Both men go for the tombstone pile drivers. Punk lands a roundhouse kick. Followed by a top rope, elbow, top rope elbow drop for good measure. Punk uh, calls for the GTF. MJF falls out of the ring. Wardlow emerges on the ramp. He then steps over MJF's body outside the ring and face off with Punk, but ends up backing off. Punk rolls MJF back into the ring. Wardlow exchanged words with the official. MJF nails Punk with the Dynamite Diamond Ring for the win, and we close the show. Again, one of the better wrestling matches on free TV in the last 20 years. Anyway, we continue, and we'll be back right after this.